My title this evening is Enlarge for More. And I said, go, 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 it may not be a topic for everybody, and then this is a message for him. But I just felt the Lord gave me this message strictly for, for you as a couple, that it is time for you to, to enlarge for more. Amen. You know, that, that, that there is more in store for you guys. There is more in store. But it is a fact, maybe before I even start, I'm reminded of a story of a pastor who told his doctor that he was not able to do the things that he used to do in the house. And um, when the examination was completed, you know, he said uh, to the doctor, Doctor, will you please tell me in plain Shangan, Tsonga, yeah. what's wrong with me? Yeah. And well, in plain Tsonga, the doctor replied, Walolo, ha. Huh? That simply means we are vilapa, you are lazy. Waloloa. And the guy said, okay. Said the pastor. Now give me the medical term so I can tell my wife. Okay, okay. Now, <laughs> listen to this. You see, human beings are creatures of habit. We all want to get around like we used to. It is our tendency to resist being stretched. We have gotten so comfortable and established a routine. We have believed a lie and come up with a medical term for it. Oh, we have come up with a spiritual term to describe that situation. Even when the doctor says, Waloloa, you are lazy. Instead of dealing with laziness, we want a spiritual term for it. We want a spiritual term for it so that we can be comfortable about it. And this is the language of Christians. Most of the time we are saying, it is not the will of God for me to be successful or maybe it is the will of God that I am going through what I am going through. We are not dealing with the matter, but we, we have given our situation a spiritual term. Have we had this one? The economy is bad. There is nothing that I can do. The area is not fertile for growth. I futwang. Sometimes we go on, we say it is better to have quality than multitudes. You remember? These are the terms in the house of God. Others will even go further and say this mega church thing, it is not for me. In <laughs> we have found a spiritual term to put ourselves in a container so that we can be comfortable, so that you know we are not challenged. We find ourselves settled in that area. We find a spiritual term. What is a spiritual term that you have given yourself in your own situation? And unfortunately, we are in this mess in South Africa that we are in because of these spiritual terms that we have given ourselves. I refuse to be that pastor. I refuse to be that pastor. Let me give you some truth. According to God. It's not God's will for you to be contained in a pond. Doesn't matter the pond that you might be in. 
it is not the will of God. I don't care how you spiritualize that thing. It is not the will of God that it should be contained in a pond. And listen to me. You can only be as big as your pond. You see, when you look at the pond and the fish, it's so small in the pond. It is not the nature of that fish. The very same fish, when you take it and then you put it in a bigger environment, it will actually grow. But the pond makes the fish to be small. And then we accept that. Listen to me. You will never grow beyond your own beliefs or limitations. If you limit yourself here, you will never go, go, grow beyond that. And unfortunately, the enemy has done so well in that area. They've done so well in that area. And we know the scripture that we love, but we don't believe in it. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope in the future. We quote the scripture, but we don't believe in it. So I said, number one, it is not God's will for you to be contained in a pond. Number two, it is not God's will for you to live an unproductive life. It is not the will of God. According to Genesis chapter 1, you know, from verse 26, the Bible says, Then God said, let us make men in our, in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. Verse 27 says, says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. Okay, verse 27 says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. That was the plan of God. You have never seen a tree, orange tree struggling to produce an orange. Oh, 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 because it is designed to produce ama orange. Let me tell you, I have blessed you, I have empowered you to increase. We don't pray for blessings. Are you with me? We don't give because we want to be blessed, but we give because we are blessed. Blessings, they are in the inside of us. Is the question, Oguti, have we activated those blessings? It is not God's will for you to live an unproductive life. Ufanu stress. Umangu na itele mpilu ni akunga spiritualize. Kale tolue nukale kuche hofu matka du kale tolue ni ukale pansu kale kule chizinto. Gwenza gala. Yine nga yenzi gale. Yine nga yenzi gale. Umangu na be satisfied. If you are not growing, don't spiritualize that. Ukuti mehevi lenda wa eko fetai. You have just cursed yourself. The corner. Yes, sir. Number three, it is not God's will for you to live in lack. It is very clear. Utu Cheso, I have come so that they may have life and life in abundance. I believe the scriptures, Minam I believe them. I really believe them, Basalwan. Umaliti, he has come so that I may have life and have it more in abundance. I believe that. I want to see overflow in my life, in every area of my life. Amen. That is what I pray for and that is what I believe. And number four, it is not God's will for you to camp in your past success. This is the problem of the church. This is the problem of the church. Are you with me? And then I know that we are product of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. But my point here is that it is not God's will for you to camp in your past success. Even your past failure. You cannot camp there. And, and, and think as if you, you have arrived. No, 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 no. We always call the scriptures. When they begin to call the scriptures and says, no eye, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But we want to remain in our past. Wanna remain in our past. Uto Munye, when I was contesting in mayorship, because even now they have been breaking the stereotype. Been the stereotype because the stereotype because Abba Abba Zaluan is by Zama Gualangama, Nama Semon Suede. We tamed them. 
on the pulpit. And then I blame the church. I blame leaders. Why Christians? And I felt I needed to correct this. I said I will step into this. And because if ordinary person, and then they got step to But the moment I stepped in, and then people were just now, Umatebula Wenza. You understand? Because I wanted to break the stereotype to say those days of allowing the politicians to take over and mess our country, it is over. We cannot, hang, we cannot hang on like that anymore. But we need a new breed of Christians who are going to take responsibility and build this nation moving forward. But now, a senior man was very upset. What matebula? Yin into Yenzayo. When I saw Funi, he passed. He passed. He passed. He passed. He He passed. 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 He the He passed. He passed. He passed. He passed. Nations, my, my role now, the church knows. I'm going to say, break in the land. So, by us, good man, he pastoring responsibility. I'm going to say, hope. Every area, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, the environment, a corner, it is my responsibility. I'm not just pastoring people in pastora. Abantu in my pastora, I luane zikona in kuku. Namata tanezinja le misha to abantu na ma business wabantu. The 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 infrastructure in the area we are pastoring that because it does not make sense to me to go to church while you are going to church and then there are a lot of rubbish around, littering. The grass has not been cut. And then we think God is glorified by that. That's not, it's not glorified. Look at this excellence in, in Sipa. Look at this excellence. So beautiful. But uma upu uma uti. Ucha hanabunga ake kuruleni. Ucha hanabunga ake. Ama potholes all over there. And aba zalwa ntina silende li zulu. Weba ngwele. Oh, weba ngwele. Oh, weba ngwele. I sabelele ni minangi na angsa ngende sabelele. I want an environment that will be safe, Pastor Langi. That will be safe for my children. Banga pumavantu na mamba zote ngulwa. No, I'm pastoring them. We have started now when I'm sipa. Ma figala nde la the ladies are sonto in bafane ba yotol ba yenza male sins we we self defense. We're talking about enlarge for more. Enlarge for more. If we have to do the exploits, we need to, to lead in a different way. It must begin with us as ministers. We, we, we must break limitations for you. We must break these boundaries for you. You must realize that life is not only the spiritual matters. We need to enter into all these spheres. We need to take the business world. We need to take the, the, the political world, all these spheres. We need to explore, to explore in all these areas of life. But listen what the book of, of Isaiah chapter 54, the scripture that we all know. It says in verse 1, Sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy. You who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. 
Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess. Nazo, what? Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame, you know, of your youth. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now look at the word, look at the word to enlarge. The word to enlarge, it simply means to expand, to increase, to unfold, to stretch out, to grow larger, or to go beyond. This is us as this generation, you guys. You need to explore, you need to do great things, you need to go beyond. You need to better things. You need to increase. You need to unfold things. Stretch out. Grow large. It also goes on and says to, to enlarge also means to make room for more. Make room for more. To enlarge also means to break out. To break through. To go further. To occupy new territories. To break limits. To think big. This is what God wants us to, to do, Basalwar. For how long are we going to be on the back seat? This is what God wants us to do. You know what I see, Basalwar? We've said, listen to Nabum I, I see hospitals that the church must actually run. We, we must own hospitals, we must own schools. We must enlarge, we, 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 we must grow, we must extend our influence in every sphere of life. That is us as God's people. We cannot always be on the back seat. We cannot always follow. No. But we must be on the lead. But it begins, Barcelona, by thinking big. You know, I was doing a study when I'm super, and I realized. I think in this way, during his cuts of COVID, that is when I got saved. That is when I got saved because I started questioning things, started sitting down, and uh, to a point that I looked at even the training, I got a Bible school, and I realized, young girl, and the propaganda. Most of it was a propaganda. To a point that I even looked at Amakulo Angen, Aparatukilongo. The missionaries were, 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 were planning some of the things. Let me tell you, the, 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 they were softening us. Using our own language, our, young, our own people to, to say, Balani la makulo ganji, umma satata izwe. Bona mabakabanga izu. And then you look at our fathers. They were comfortable in Gubem Shop. Yet they were suffering. Everything, you know. They peggy where you peg or lent or you peg or sasal and jesia bazalwane es peganen es zulu. You know, yet we are struggling. Even today, you look around, it is very few black churches that are prospering. And young girls across the board, Africa. Africa is one nation or continent where we can pray more and fast more. The presence of God will come down. But at the same time, the poverty is in our midst. So the servants one month. We keep on going. We keep on going. Oh, servants, and I'm so excited that God is bringing kingdom leaders, yes. kingdom leaders, yes. and we're gonna come together. We're gonna build this kingdom. We're gonna build this generation, Basalwan. We're not gonna be a generation of beggars. 
We're not going to be a generation, you know, that keeps on asking, asking, um, pem, pem. those days are over. And I'm strongly believing God for that that is going to take us to high heights and we're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, Bazalwane, true freedom, true freedom is right here. If our people are free right here, let me tell you, all of us, and then we're going to be free. Can I provoke you a little bit? Look at the hundred rand that you earn, that you're getting as a salary. Which at the end of the day, EAP. You're getting it? Oh, my land, Angela, it's gone. Yes. Let me ask you, where do you buy your grocery? It's either you buy your grocery, Google Wet, Checkers, Pick and Pay, Spa, Short Ride. Who's the owner of that? Yes. Think about it. Your investment. Where do you put your pension fund? Probably Alexander Forbes, Liberty, Momentum. Uh huh. Who's owning that? No. Let's leave that. No. You've got a medical aid. No. Discovery, no. Momentum, no. Bonuses. Who's owning that? You buy clothes. No. You go to Louis Vuitton. Who's Louis Vuitton? Say the name of a person. Onga Mars. Go to Louis Vuitton. It tells me it's someone's name. Hugo Boss. It's not an African, I'll tell you. You understand? And in Uksuga Lapo, Bessia Lapago, go go Mercedes Benz. Say I found an army I drive and go say I'm in sis. I can go on and on. Ackermans. Ackermans. Markhams. Edgars. For shin. Everything. Uitholange. Uitholange for a few days. It's gone again. And our leaders, they, they, they did not confront those things. Now I'm confronting those things. I love my friends, they are white. I love them, I tell them, but it, we cannot do ministry like that. If you really, and here is something that was troubling me in Fulis. When I speak to my white friends, I hope you are not online. <laughs> you are not. When I speak to them about giving food to, to the destitute, they don't have a problem. They don't have a problem in giving food. But when I say to them, I have recognized I have seen a family that needs a house. Can we build a house for this family? They don't want to do that. And I said, listen, can we build a school? Can we go to Alexander? I will put a two million aside. Can we come? Because all of you, my friends, you, you are doing well. If one of you can give two million, two million, even now, I mean, answer two million in Zyberga. I guess I can scroll up Alexander. Nobody wants to build a school. Nobody wants to build a school. Because when, when, when you build a school, you are educating them. So it is better. I advertise and say we have fed so much people. And then not see Pagam Susanta, see a bonga, us fidile. I'm angry. I'm angry, George. We can't do ministry like that. And we still have leaders who are begging, receiving food from other folks. That provoked me. I said to them, I will, I will help my black brothers. During COVID, we had to take the money that we were supposed to build a building now. Over 20 million. See, I said, we're going to build houses for our people. We're going to take care of the, of the church of Jesus. We're going to take care of the pastor every, pastors every month. You know, in the whole of COVID season, we were giving groceries to our pastors. You know, even those that we don't know. I said, Joseph must take care of his own people. And we need to do that. So I'm appealing to the pastors. If we are going to enlarge for more, we need to change here. Our, our sermons must change. 
Let us not tame our people. We must empower them so that they can think and they can achieve more and do great exploits and changing this generation. Otto Steve Beagle, black man, you are on your own. There's no other savior. The painful thing is that we are being led by people who do not love us. That is something that I, do, I still don't understand. That's a painful thing to be led by people who do not care about your well-being. I put a simple suggestion. I said, it is a good thing to give those who are in leg 350. But Mr. President, Mr. Minister, can we ask this man just once or twice a week, let them just offer one hour your service in cleaning the streets so that they can better their community. And then you give them this 350 because when you do that, you are bringing dignity to a man. You are, you are empowering him than to give him a 350. It's a good thing. Let's do that. They said, no. The moment you make them to work now, they, they'll demand more. Let me tell you. They are just... This is how this world operates. If you want to remain in power, Make them to depend on you. Make them to depend on you. Paralyze them so that they can continue to depend on you. You kill them here. Kill them here. And they'll depend on you. And they'll vote you again. And that's the strategy that politicians have used over the years. Everywhere. Keep them poor. And they'll come back and, and, and do the same to you just to vote you. I'm saying to you, we need to enlarge. We need to enlarge. Now, five things you need to enlarge for more. Five things you need. I'm sorry this thing has taken a different way. That's how now things have started happening in my life. I'm no longer sure if I'm a puppy to have said that's safe. Mom will be Number one, I strongly believe that we need to enlarge, you need to enlarge your capacity for God. You need to enlarge your capacity for God. You know one of the names of God is El Shaddai. Yeah. Yeah. And that simply means the God who is more than enough. Mm. Come on, guys. Hey. This is the God that we serve. Yeah. He is more than enough. Yeah. Not just enough, but more than enough. Verse 1 says, sing, O barren woman, shout for joy. You know, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. He's an El Shaddai God. He is more than enough. Listen to me if you want to see exploits in your life. Never limit him. Never limit. You know, I believe God for, 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 for more when I'm sick. Amen. To a point that, I mean, during COVID, we bought a building at 30 million rand. Yeah. No. During COVID. No. We, we've used the money, but we, 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 we got a building in mid-rent. I'm, I'm sharing to encourage you from a black brother to a black brother here. Yeah. Are you with me? From a black brother to a black brother. Yeah. We got that building. And you know the funny part of it, it was owned by the Guptas. During COVID, when the bank, because we had to go to the bank, and no man here bank, man figure la pagu standard bank, no, no, apps. U standard bank, we ang shingela. Uti, uti, we don't, we don't finance churches. I said, can you put that in, in a letter, in writing? FNB, I mean, APSA. <laughs> but no, we're not going to put it in writing. And then, but we are telling you, I hope you guys, you are prepared 
to stand with this because I'm going to tell all the churches not to bend with you anymore. Because it does not make sense to me that you want our money, you want our money, we are banking with you, but you are not prepared, you know, to finance us when we need money. I said, let me tell you, yes, the list of the churches that I'm connected to, and then you must be ready. And then not only that, all the people who are banking with Standard Bank, you know, I'm the first one in a church, over 20,000 of them. I am going to tell them to take out, you know, the, their, their account to, to another bank. But I can't say the account, nani. But my table will come, let us, let us talk. Let us talk. Now you want to talk. For too long, we have been quiet. For too long, we have allowed wrong things to happen in our watch. I said, never again. Oh, bang nige ba kichi my 20 million. Bang nige ba kichi my foot nga ma thames way to. No to wabo. And here is, the, here is the beauty of this. Here is the beauty of this. Because there's God here. So we had to discuss the issue of e e insurance. So I was not even aware of the value of the building. You, George, you've seen that. You've seen, the, you've seen the building. So when the guys comes in, they said, you know what? We can't insure this building at 30 million because if anything happens here, the 30 million cannot rebuild this thing. It was not enough. So now the valuation comes to 160 million. So we got a building. Look at God. Yeah. <laughs> 30 million. A yeah. yeah. value. Yeah. 160 million. Hey, now Baba Zalwan and Amba Naban Kulumi store Nabayas. You've been there, I've taken you, I've taken you, I've taken you there. That's God. What am I what am I saying, Bazalwan? Don't limit God. Man. Yes, sir. Let us not limit God. This is an El Shaddai God. The God who is more than enough. He is more than enough. The God that we serve. Agabi broke. You have one says spend this card in Abantu. Abba broke too much. And then we sometimes think this God is broke. That is our attitude as God's children. Does, does not work like that. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. He can supply for you. 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 You know, at the same time, he is more than enough. More than enough. So my point on that point is that, grab this point. Always make room for God. Will you remember that point? Yes. Make room for God. I said enlarge your capacity for God, but my point here is that don't limit God. Make room for him. Number two, number two, enlarge your capacity to see. Enlarge your capacity to see. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. But I don't know if you have read the same verse with the message translation. Listen to what it says with the message. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, <laughs> they stumble all over themselves. They don't stumble over others, but they stumble over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are more blessed because now they attend to what he reveals. Don't attend on what people reveal. Attend on what God reveals. And then you stick to that. But I want to go to the drink. Who shall we? Now go to the smagat. I got to the smagat. What are we ready? Are we ready now for a building of COVID? Hey, Nyagusa. 
Goto Okulumile. I will focus on that. And what I'm saying to you, Pastor Ron, make a room for your vision. If you want to expand, if you want to enlarge your capacity to see, make a room for your vision. You know, God operates in a different way. He says to Abraham, when he was telling him, when he was complaining about inheritance and all that, my son and all, blah, 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 you know the story. Takes him out of the tent. Takes him outside. He says, look up on the sky. He says, as far as your eyes can see, it will be yours. God never said to him while he was in the tent, because if he was in the tent and say, look up, because of only roof. So you see, these things that are surrounding us, sometimes they limit us. It is very important for you, very important to take a walk and leave other people. Take a walk with God and look up as far as your eyes can see. Utu Jehovah, that is yours. So I'm saying to you, make a room for your vision. Make a room for your vision. Number three, enlarge your capacity to forgive. This is very important. I just felt, you know, that we needed to put this because unforgiveness limits us in reaching out for more. Listen to that scripture. Listen to verse 4. God says, do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. Forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. You know, many a times people, they don't enlarge. They don't do more because of their past pains. So when you are about to do something, the devil begins to remind you of your past, your past failure. And listen to me here. When I'm saying enlarge your capacity to forgive, I'm saying it is very important to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself because all of us, we have made some mistakes. We have made wrong decisions in life. When I was 10, year, 10 years old, I ran away from home. And I was in the streets of Johannesburg for five years. And I was taught how to read at the age of 15. Age 15. The education here called Aktua, itini ma, me, me, mo, mu. I mean, imagine now, now I have put myself together now to go to school. Ma, me, me, mo, mu. Gutua, you must master the parts of, of, of a grasshopper. In Sizangani, grasshopper, and a man, and you land in Sizangani. Need a man to master a grasshopper, best of all, lizard. But you must master. The parts of a lizard. In Ghana, a lizard, Lankon. But listen to me, Basalon. I'm saying to you, it is very important because when I grew up, I had a lot of challenges. To a point that even today, sometimes I will read this into vice versa because my mind was damaged. So I could not even read in front of people. I struggled when I came to ministry. But this statement helped me. Oh, you must learn to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of all the wrongdoings that you have done, the mistake, the decisions that you have made. Mean I'll do what I, I have to do. Uma unenging awe na a a a yama noun na ma prefix na ma verb. Angna skatsa ma verb mina mina nanga ruati verb mina nti sari do rashkwembu the word of God uzo sala na ma verb na ma noun wa komina sengulir sengulir and I'm comfortable. Uma ngesi shaile ngas break is lo angi nanda ba kotoa inda ba yona yona. And I forgive myself and I sleep very well with that. 
Listen to me, child of God. You need to come to a point where you forget about your past. You forget about your mistake. You forget about your weaknesses. You forget about what you cannot do. And then you make sure you specialize on what you can do better and make sure you put energy into that. You put more strength into that. And then the anointing of God will do the rest. Never allow the devil to use your past to block your future. He's very good at that, to steal our future by bringing our past in front. Yes, you aborted the baby then. That was then. This is now. What is it that the Lord wants you to do? That's the You know, Hey, thank you, Lord, that you did not answer these prayers. It's only now that made sense. Yeah. Now can't. What's the now? Hey. But at that time, at that time, I was broken. I can't give you a two rand. Keep a hundred rand, John. Nine, nine, nine. 900 rand, so bye bye. The source card was we are late or we are late. I got a bra. I said, Thank you, Lord, for not answering that prayer. Now I can enlarge. Please be seated. Let me finish this. Please let me finish this. I'm just having fun here. My, oh, see if I can come to this church anytime. Can I be a member of this church? I can, I can carry your Bible wherever you go. These people are amazing. So, good number one. Oh, I was saying enlarge your capacity to, to forgive. Right? So, my point here is that make room for the future. You need to make room for the future because if, if you can't forgive yourself, you are limiting yourself for the future. But when you forgive, you are making room for the future. God will never bless a cup that is full of bitterness. He will never, that cup will never overflow. When David says my cup, he fills my cup until it overflows. It is because that cup is full of joy. Amen. It's able to overflow Amen. because it's full of joy. But if that cup is full of bitterness, everything that you put in the inside there, it's swallowed by bitterness. Oh. Swallowed by bitterness. See, oh. that. So I'm saying for you, to you, make room for the future. Amen. Number four, enlarge your capacity for growth. Amen. You need to enlarge capacity for growth. Growth is often a painful process. Think wide and think kingdom. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. And I love that stanza there that says do not hold back. Do not hold back. Because when you, you stretch a rubber there's a tendency of holding back. And the scripture says, do not hold back. Because your growth is in your stretching. When you do something that you have never done before. But your body says, I am used to this. I am comfortable here. I am comfortable. I am safe in the pond. There are no sharks here in the pond. I am safe. I can live long in the pond but you will live like a rat. You will always remain small. But for that fish to become a bigger size fish, 
it must actually go into the sea. But in the sea, there are sharks. In the sea, there are sharks. But as much as there are sharks right there, that is the space for your growth. Many people, they don't want to step into a space where there are sharks. We always want to be in a comfort zone. Listen to me, there's no growth in a comfort zone. In a comfort zone, you will never grow. There's no growth in the comfort zone. Do not hold back. Always make sure that you do something that you have never done. Read a book that you have never read before. Buy books. Buy books. Leave those Louis Vuitton things. Leave it. You are, I just told you you are making somebody rich. Leave those things. Buy books. Go to places that are going to challenge you. Travel. And see what is happening in the country. I went to Singapore the other day. It's three buildings. It's swimming pool. From one building to the other. Hey, my mom, see my lap, my mom. Me as a man, go to Laguna Squambula. Masquambula. Masquambula. That's my yam of Kina. I lap. A corner, my yam out and the lap Kelala. Lap Kelala. Malala Conversal. Smangas Gangulu. And my thinking changed. And when I was there, I realized that that hotel, I think it's Marine Bay, it was actually built in a space where it used to be a sea. There was no ground. There was no ground. You know what they did? The guys, they brought more soil. They pushed the sea away. They push the sea away by putting, you know, a lot of soil, creating extra ground, making room for more. And they built that hotel right there. When they started explaining these things, I realized nothing is impossible. You can always make room for more. Celebrating and financing in Dubai. People who only had two resources, a desert and the water, because the oil was running short of in that country. They were running short of oil. The guy was told that in 2016, you won't have oil anymore. And he, he had only two things, water and the desert. When Zani, no water in the desert. He decided, we're going to take the soil, this desert, we're going to put it in the water. And we're going to build a lot of islands. And we're going to build houses. And people will come and invest. We build hotels, they come and invest. Tinala, Sine Gold, Sine Diamond, you know, Fertile Ground, Platinum, everything, Yonke, anything that you can think of but we are so poor because people that don't think silly melele. What a tragedy. That is why, George, my brother, we need to fix these things. COVID has proven with Akuna leadership. For the first time, not only in South Africa, in the world to have a country, you know, and then with... 76% of young people unemployed. We are the first country. Tragedy. They will never taste the job. It is not a case according to the stats. They will never taste the job. So Maybe, maybe. Amanya Makos. 
because we know oh, there's a, always a shortage of food. And then if you plant cabbage, you plant something, spinach, umo harvest, there is always somebody who's going to buy that. Lawa manyama cost lawa. Siya bonga mawu IT une job. But all kalaya na mtla ya IT ni magandana mtala ni magandana. We need to change that. Because you look at the courses, you look at the career that are flourishing today. Ten years ago, they were not in existence. These are new courses. Have you ever thought of a social media marketer? There's no courses called in a social media marketer. Social media engineer. So we need to tell our children. Energy engineer. Says mechanics, Josh, mechanical and then a civil pair. Says the move We need people who are going to do engineering in energy. How do you develop energy? Data mining. Water mining. Water mining. Because that's gonna be the greatest challenge in our country. The war that will break out in this country will be on water or in the world. So we need to teach our people how to mine water. And not only to mine water, but to harvest water. How to harvest. And I want to make it up by food. Plumbing, it is another way. Ah. So I was saying, enlarge your capacity for more. All that I was saying, I was saying, make room for pain. You need to make room for pain on that point. And the last one is that enlarge your capacity to influence. Enlarge your capacity to influence. Enlarge your influence. There are many untapped avenues. I already touched on that. The scripture says here, Isaiah 54, verse 3. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. What troubles me is that the Arabs, they understand these things. Muslims, they understand these things. Look at waterfall. Look at waterfall. Billions and billions of investors are right there. These guys, they took that land. And by the way, you don't buy waterfall. You rent. You lease. For 99 years, you lease. You don't buy it. You'll never own that house. You lease it for 99 years old. Because they've been taught, according to the Leviticus, they, they believe in the Old Testament. But when you have a piece of a land, you don't sell. You don't sell a piece of a land. You don't sell. Unfortunately, our leadership, like South Africa, you, you buy a land just like that. People, they just, they just get land. When you go to Dubai, you don't buy a land there. You will never get a land. You know, the population of Dubai, it's only two million. And whoever is going there, they just work for them. But nobody can claim to say they are owning a land in Dubai. Because Arabs and Muslims, they believe in this principle. We don't sell a land. You don't sell something that has been created by God. You don't do it. But Tina Siteng Saranja, Ngeti mena noma iland inge na value. You keep it. In due season, Nancy Waterfall is a good example. For years, these Muslims have been owning that land. For years. It's only 10 years ago. Look at the development now. The economy of South Africa, Ilapa, Waterfall. And unfortunately, it's in the hands of Muslims. They are advancing their own kingdom. And you want us to advance the kingdom. 
says I argue or says I says I debate or uh, are we supposed to give from gross or from 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 net? Says I says I debate a lesson in dollars. Says I say la pongeti menagini. People already they are advancing their kingdom. God, He has a plan for us, Mr. Ram. What I want you to spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants, he's not even talking a language, Yako. Utu when I say concern now, Utu Jehovah Mina, you concern my descendants, Wako. That your descendants must dispossess not just the land, but nations. This thing of Ukraine and Russia, it is not about now. It is not about these leaders. These guys, they are thinking about their next generation. He says, I'd rather invade, you know, in Ukraine, not just for myself, but for the sake of the next generation. This is the battle of the generation. And you think this is just church? We are not here to sing songs only. David understood this matter. He understood this matter. Goliath says to David, hey, if I conquer you, give me a man, Saul, give me a man. If I conquer this man, you and your children, you will serve me for the rest of my life. It was not just a battle between David and Goliath. It was a generational battle. When David faced Goliath, he understood Oh, he was not there to represent himself. The whole nation and the next generation was behind him. That is why he had to run to the battlefield. Read your Bible very well. It says he ran to the battlefield because matters of the next generation as the funi ukdreke is now. You must run. You must run. You run to the battlefield. You run with your money, my girl. You run with your resources. You give like crazy. I was telling him, I said, you know what? I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God that if there's a church that has been built, I want to put something into that church because I understand this is bigger than me. This is bigger than me. It's for the next generation. When I see a church coming up, I go to those places. For the mere fact that we are building a church, that is my offering because this is for the next generation. And I'm believing God for more, for more, so that we can plant. When we me, problem now. Look at how much you are spending for your hair. Look at how much you are spending. Young man, as you move to present year, year, year two thousand. Unigela ngotu ngotu ende rand. I have a problem. Ukoge i fifty thousand. Where is the kingdom of them? over a million rand. Come offering time. You are giving a 50 rand with pride. 100 rand into the NJB. Into a businessman. A businessman. They are calling you a businessman. Generations are at stake here. Generations are at stake. The passion. 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 It is led by Louis Giglio in America. They just had the conference here, Passion. For now, Berg and Apoglia conference, but what say Mercedes Benz Stadium with over 80 young people, teenagers. Young people. Yeah. passion. The majority are white boys. Majority are white boys. I said, Lord, white folks, they are empowering their own. Under the bridges, our boys are dying before time. Yet you are here, you are still struggling, debating about offering. This is not about an offering. This is not about a salary of a pastor. I am not here for a salary. I am not here for an offering. 
I am here for the next generation. As a matter of fact, Msipa, even the offering of plan Take that money and invest it somewhere because there is somebody who needs it more. This is bigger than you, girl. This is bigger than me. I can't keep on seeing our boys dying like flies. And we are okay about it. We are okay. Are you okay about it? Same. Are you okay? Here you are. You are frustrated as a pastor that you don't have a Mercedes Benz. You still want a Mercedes Benz. Because that is the definition of ministry today. Every pastor must drive a Mercedes Benz. Your generations are suffering. I can't do this, Mr. Lenin, I can't. I refuse to be that type of a pastor. I refuse. I refuse to be that type of a pastor. I'm going to put it to all of them. I'm going to put it to all of them. It cannot be like that. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. Limo Shaka. We live our lives before you. We live our lives. Make it personal, make it personal. I lay my life. I lay. Is there anybody who says I want to lay my life? Not just for me, but for the sake of the next generation. Is there anybody who says I want to just, just want to lay my life for the sake of the next generation? Before you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. How I love, I lay my life. I lay. Sing it soft. Sing it soft. Begin to speak to your daddy. Oh, Rebosian de la Vacante. Father, here we come before you, oh God. We come before you, my father. We come before you. Sandra Pamco Sobacon, Cos, Sandra Pamco Sobacon, Cosia Macos, and Cosenga Clay. Oh, Rebosian de la Macante. Oh, Baba, oh, Baba. Listen, I eat, Oh yes Jesus Oh yes Jesus Oh yes Father Yes Lord Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
I live my One more time, lift up your voice in this place. Just take a moment to pray over this nation. Shando resele beko parindi mili miya kabada ba. Mare de bezole brahman deri di biki plagre deri di biki le brahman deri de bezore de bezaya. Mare de bezore de meke le brahman deri di biki plagro deri di biki setere de bezaya. Mare de bezele breke pere de bezia la man deri di biki plagre deri de bezota. Man zere bere le beko plagre deri di biki plagre deri de bezaya. Ide be kose le vraba tere de biki le braman dere de biki plagre dere de biki setere de besaya. Mazore bakam plagre dere de biki plagre dere de biki plagra. Manje ziri de biki plagre dere de biki plagre dere de beko sata. Manze de bezo le vraman dere de biki plagre dere de biki seta. Manzo de bar vela greta zon dere de biki plagre dere de biki seta. Mandi di biki plagre deri di biki setere de beso tari di biki plagra mandi di di biki plagro deri di biki setere de beso ya manze de pele frando di biki plagra manji zi di biki plagro deri di biki seta o zande malima kata zata di di biki plagre mandi di di biki plagre vere de besa taba oh God in the name of Jesus Christ oh Father even in our nation oh Master. In the name of Jesus, we make room for you, O oh Father. We build capacity, O oh God. For we know that you can still do more in our nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Father. O oh God, may we reclaim our place. Mighty God, as kingdom people, may we reclaim our place. Even as the church, O oh God, in this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh Father. May we reclaim our position. May we reclaim our voice. May we reclaim our role in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Father. I paro de suka pali agreta, zete per kila prote suka terba, en suta pal veradeska. That, O God, we may not just build for ourselves, but we may build, O God, for the coming generations, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, O Father. Oh, we call upon your name, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, O God. Oh, Father, you are the God who never fails. You are the God who never fails. 
You are the God who never fails. You are the God who is able, oh God, to do exceedingly, abundantly above. We can never ask or think. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, see us in Kalabue. We have failed ourselves. Oh God, we say, use us, oh God. Use us, oh Father. Give us wisdom. Give us ideas, innovations, strategies, oh God, inspired by your Holy Spirit to bring solutions, to provide answers, to impact cities and communities, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. May we raise, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. A generation that will impact cities and nations, oh God. May we be the ones who will send people out to nations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we thank you that you will give us capacity for more. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, give us the grace to make room. Give us the grace to make room for more. Give us grace to make room for more. May we never think small ever again. But may we believe you for more. May we believe you for big things. Forgive us for limiting you, God. Forgive us for creating an impression that you are a small God. while you can do great and mighty exploits through us. We are returning, O oh God, to you with a heart of repentance and we know that, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, great things are ahead of us. We thank you, mighty God, for your servant whom you have used tonight to be a prophetic voice in our midst. We receive this word as a prophetic word to this generation. May we forever treasure it in our hearts. Grant us the grace to go and implement it. That the word may become flesh. And much less in the glorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. If you are excited, just give Jesus a big hand of praise in this place. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. I don't know what to say. I have no words. But I can tell you that God is up to something. God is doing something. Thank you so much. We really, we really appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for what you stand for and what you represent in this nation. Your life, even before you say anything, but through even the things that you do, is prophetic to us as a generation. And we are grateful. We are thankful. May we not take you for granted. May we not misuse and abuse this grace. We truly treasure you. We truly treasure you. Yeah. It's a challenge. Pastor George, Pastor Lung, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. We are taking it. Young people. God is talking to us. Young people are dying. Young people are dying. Before we know it, we'll have counselors, mayors who are in drugs if we don't step in. We will start somewhere. But we will do it. Thank you so much. Pastors, here's a challenge. This thing, it has been the theme of this training. This thing is beyond us as individuals. Here is God reminding us once again, this thing, 
It's bigger than just one local church. Way bigger than that. And if we are not going to see beyond ourselves, I don't know what. I don't know what. I don't know what. Can we just allow, please, um, our guest to just go downstairs? Um, thank you so much, my friends, for coming through. I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Let's give. Hey. <laughs>